I have three basic questions about China's state-owned enterprises, SOEs. First, in terms of political economy, what's the optimal role of SOEs in China's socialist market economy? Second, in terms of market competition, what's the optimal relationship between SOEs and private companies in different industries? And third, in terms of SOE operations and governance, what's the optimal structure of SOE management and boards of directors, including state controls? Everyone agrees that there is need for SOE reform, but what kind of reform and how fast? That's the dispute, and that's closer to China. China Petrochemical, China Mobile, and China Shipping. These well-known mega companies represent the country's state-owned enterprises, or SOEs. Today, China has over 150,000 SOEs at the national and local level. The main SOEs will continue to play a major role in both domestic and global markets, particularly in strategic industries. In 2015, China unveiled a document outlining prescribed reforms in key industries. The core of the SOE reforms is to enable market forces to play a decisive role in the country's economy. To understand issues of SOE reform, I speak with three thought leaders. Zhou Fanshong is vice director of the China Enterprise Reform and Development Society, a government think tank. Zheng Xin Li is vice president of the China Center for International Economic Exchanges. He is also former deputy director of the policy research office of the CPC Central Committee. And Fang Gang, a distinguished economist, is director of the National Economic Research Institute. After 1949, state-owned enterprises gradually undertook all the nation-building tasks, and they provided the livelihood of many workers. Since China's reform and opening up began in 1978, rounds of SOE reforms have increasingly opened up industrial sectors to competition from non-state enterprises, and the relative economic weight of the state sector has declined substantially. Could you give me a brief introduction to the history of state-owned enterprises, SOEs, uh, in China? The SOE reforms have remained a crucial part of China's reform of its economic system. Why? Before 1978, China adopted a planned economy where SOEs were the major entities. After the reform and opening up, Private economy and foreign capital were encouraged as China promoted market-oriented development and a market economy. Against that backdrop, SOEs had also to experience a transition from a planned economy to a market economy to adapt to the new scenarios and meet the new requirements which call for reforms. Uh, we did uh, a quite a big uh, reforms in late 90s. We call it the uh, means uh, 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 keep the big one, but let the small one go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, during that process, uh, during that period of time, uh, the, the structure really changed. I mean, the, most of the so-called competitive manufacturing industries became more or less private company uh, industries, but the State company concentrated in so-called national interest, uh, national strategic industries. Mm -hmm. So that makes uh, quite a big uh, progress because 70% of uh, GDP come from those so-called competitive industries rather than those monopoly industries. So from that state company, state sector become a minority uh, uh, sector, mm -hmm. no longer as a dominant. To oversee SOEs and to further their reforms, China founded the State-Owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission, or SASEC, in 2003. The commission is primarily a state asset watchdog. Its objective includes guiding and pushing forward the reform and restructuring of SOEs. 
As a result, the number of SOEs owned by SASEC fell from 196 in 2003 and is expected to drop below 100. Establishment of the state-owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission, or SASAC, is a hallmark of the transition. Before, the government managed SOEs with a lot of overlap. Different departments interfered in the management of SOEs according to their own functions, which made it difficult to hold anyone specific to account. But there was another option in line with the law of wages that was to specify just one subject for shareholders, one subject for management, and one subject for responsibilities. Some would say that rather than continuing the third phase, that we really need a fourth phase to accelerate the reforms of SOEs, that the gradual reforms since 2002 are really not sufficient to make a true transformation of China's economy. Do, do you agree with that? With the cycle of the economy, the growth rate has slowed down. Compounded by overcapacity and economic restructuring in process, many SOEs suffered losses in their balance books, which gave rise to what we call zombie companies. During this period, the lack of a sound corporate mechanism and institution has remained a serious problem. Market-oriented reforms remain a daunting task to be accomplished. So as you look at uh, the, the Chinese economic structure, which are the institutions today which need greater change? Well, if you look at uh, the way growth has been generated in the last 10 to 15 years, a couple of things uh, uh, really strike you. There's been a huge flow of resources, particularly extremely cheap capital, to the very large uh, manufacturers and the SOEs. Meanwhile, you look at small and medium enterprises, uh, which had much limited access to resources and very expensive capital. Uh, perhaps that's the reason why Chinese SMEs, small and medium enterprises, are incredibly efficient. They had to borrow at 30%. And if you can borrow at 30% and make a profit, you're good at what you do. Meanwhile, large SOEs were borrowing at below the, below the level of, uh, of inflation, below the GDP deflator. So they became very sloppy about their use of capital. It is very important to allow the private sector to compete with their SOEs on an equal footing. Another vital issue here is to create a better environment for it to operate in. The natural and administrative monopolized industries taken up by a large amount of SOEs should also allow the private sector to participate by forming joint stock companies which will be comprehensively taken out in 2017. Moreover, the direction of the reform is crucial. We should pull back SOEs in certain fields. We will see that over 100 central SOEs will be restructured into more than 30. The purpose of the restructure is to adjust to global competition and to make room by listing SOEs on the stock market, multiple shareholders, including private investors, are introduced, and the proportion of shares held by the government is reduced. In 2015, Shanghai state-owned enterprises produced record profits, up 19 percent over the same period in the previous year. Such performance is in contrast with the country's overall picture. In 2015, the total profit for SOEs was down 6.7 percent from 2014. The current round of reforms have been launched to promote mixed ownership so that we can truly realize a market economy. 
We advocate extensive reforms in competitive sectors, but we have not specified the exact equity structure. Rather, we need to tailor the reforms to each company's actual situation. More and more people realized uh, something to do with the, uh, <laughs> there must be something to do with the ownership issue, you know, uh, because it's a state company. It's hard to be, uh, uh, to be managed in the uh, market way, hard to make a transaction even, you know, hard to make the merge acquisition, because that's a company about, you know, that's what the industry about. You need, you need a, the, the change, it's a change all the time. And a new industry take, you know, emerge and the old industry should shut down. You know, a lot of things happen. It's not a, you know, the steady the state. It's dyna very dynamic. I think the, uh, still a lot of people think about we need a more privatization. If privatization is not happened, but let's make the uh, so-called the mixture mixed ownership company first, allow more, you know, private uh, investors uh, hold more shares. So most SOE should work towards diversified ownership, while those related to national defense or people's livelihood should remain exclusively state-controlled. Say, aerospace companies can only be run by the state, while the majority of other stakes are in private capital and foreign capital. Then, on the basis of diversified equity, they establish a standard corporate system with a board of shareholders, board of directors, and the management, who can check and coordinate the work of each other in a science-based governing structure. This is the most efficient method to prevent internal control in SOEs and an important development trend in a modern corporate system. Some political economists would argue that if you go to full marketization in all the competitive industries and just keep state-owned enterprises for those uh, social benefit areas or natural monopolies like utilities or railways or something, that then the, without the government controlling the vast amount of, uh, of industries and products and services in society, that there will be a lot less justification for keeping the overall concept of a socialist market economy with Chinese characteristics. It, it will have the Chinese characteristics, but maybe by that time, the use of the word socialist would become less relevant. Uh, is that a concern? I don't see any conflicts. Just think of the purpose for socialism in China. We want to give companies more vigor, more competitiveness, and better revenue so that employees earn more income and enjoy a better life through their own labor. If this is the result we aim at and are actually heading for, I see no conflicts. It's not proper to tag it as socialism just because the companies are not making a profit or suffering losses in difficulties. In August 2016, China's state assets regulator announced that the country would carry out employee stock ownership reforms in some state-owned enterprises. The state assets regulator says that the pilot program will be carried out on the condition that state-owned capital maintain a dominant control of the company. Employees allowed in the share plan include key management, researchers, and employees with excellent performances. The regulator asserts that the total amount of shares that the employees can hold should not exceed 30 percent. The dividend sharing and decentralization reforms do not cost anything or set any restrictions, as they impose no threat of losses, changes to institutions or disposal of employees. They barely affect the interests of anyone. Moreover, they motivate the majority of people. 
Through such reforms, the state control stands unaffected while most management personnel and employees can embrace higher efficiency of the company, which further leads to growing revenues that can turn losses into gains, not only contributing to the country's development, but also increasing people's personal incomes while putting in place a sound anti-corruption mechanism. How come? Because employees would suffer losses if corruption comes in when they share dividends. So they would naturally play the role of checks and balances which actually impose supervision upon rights and power. So I think this reform of sharing dividends and decentralization is where we will make a breakthrough. On this basis, resistance from interest groups will gradually subside. SOEs also grow into mixed ownerships. The core leadership, the backbone of the company, should be the first to hold the company's shares. They are also expected to design the promissory share system, which is like shackling themselves both during their position and a few years after they're leaving the post. During this specific period, they are not allowed to sell off their shares. In this way, executives are actually bound to the company as they share a common destiny. They will try all out to make the company prosper because their own income positively correlates with the company's performance. This mechanism can guarantee the prosperity of SOEs. As a matter of fact, it's also the secret of Western multinationals in their century-old prosperity. For example, IBM has already gone through more than 100 years of development, but it well remains the number one conglomerate in the IT industry. To support restructuring of the country's state-owned enterprises, China has set up a fund with a capital cap of 350 billion yuan, or 52.5 billion U.S. dollars. The fund is called the SOE Restructuring Fund and will be managed by SASEC. Topping the fund's priorities are strategic fields such as national defense and telecommunications, followed by areas in need of upgrading and transformation. The fund will finance mergers and consolidation among SOEs, particularly in the construction, steel, shipping, and aviation industries. It will also facilitate the exiting of permanently moribund enterprises, so-called zombie enterprises, in the coal, steel, and cement industries. Looking towards the future, there will be a large-scale merger and regrouping of SOEs. So this 350 billion yuan restructuring fund will be used to clean out the zombie SOEs and MNAs of heavily indebted ones. Those with highly overlapped operating fields and vicious competition should also be merged. That's what the fund is for, to optimize the structure and scale of SOEs and to regroup the businesses. Thus, this fund is transitional and temporary in its nature and won't continue operating afterwards. How can SESEC as the shareholder, as the investor, start to manage capital in addition to merely managing companies? This is the next topic for SESEC. The goal is to give shareholders a say in the company, sort of like Temasek in Singapore. If we succeed, it will also be a symbol for our success in a market-oriented development. China has been looking for national asset management models that suit her national conditions. The Tomasek model is not necessarily suitable for all the SOEs in China. What are the reasons? First of all, in China is too big, and so are the SOEs. Secondly, SOEs are involved with too many industries. Thirdly, and more importantly, our understanding of SLEs and their role in China's economy is very different from that in Singapore. That's why we can see the Tomasek model is being tested in some places, while other models are also welcomed to adapt and develop.
进行一些深耕。那么十八届三中全会呢，提出国有企业的改革。The third plenum of the 18th CBC Central Committee put forth SOE reforms and mainly expected it to move from the past management of state-owned assets to management of capital. This is the requirement of a market economy. To be more specific, in the past we managed people, issues and assets altogether, but now we want to make a change. SOEs need to change their structure in their development. State-owned capital serves as a source of investment, but according to the actual needs of corporate development, it can be in control or just as a shareholder. And depending on the portion of shares, opinions are given on appointing management directors, general managers, etc. In this way, the shift from asset management to capital management can be realized. This is in fact optimizing the state-owned capital management function instead of impairing it. So that's a, actually the three argument uh, uh, around the, uh, the, the, the state company. We need a good management. You know, as long as a good management, a uh, state company is still kind of working. And secondly, the ownership is important. Without ownership, a lot of things are uh, a company cannot uh, really work. Uh, but another one is the uh, we need a state company as a pillar of the economy because uh, we need the public goods which provided by by the state company. Mm. We need uh, somebody take the risk uh, for the for the long term project. So I'm going to have them some view on that. And they in their program they mentioned everything we uh, reform in uh, management, but we create the mixture ownership uh, company. We try to involve more private uh, investors. And also we need a, a state company take the public responsibilities. So there, are, there's obviously certain sectors that the state wants to retain, probably at the central government level rather than at the provincial government level. But there is an awful lot of uh, sectors that I think the, uh, I think small and medium enterprises and households would be able to manage much more productively. And ultimately, the whole purpose of economic development is the growth of the income of ordinary people. So that's really what the focus has to be on. In the current round of reform, what are the most important elements of the reform process? So to a certain extent, there are no other options than reform. Either the last round of reforms or this round is the same. But there are several aspects of this reform that are quite critical. First, companies need to deepen reforms of property rights, that is, allow more diversified ownership. According to some rules and regulations in practice, we need to classify SOEs. Most companies are in highly competitive industries, so they need to exert greater efforts to push for reforms of mixed ownership. That is, they need to bring in private capital, foreign capital, and the capital of employees, the three of which are equity diversification between state-owned capital and non-state-owned capital. In the actual reform of diversified ownership, there are no restrictions to state-owned capital, which means can be in absolute control. Impartial control or just as a common shareholder, all depending on the needs of the business operation. If you look in the future when all of the reforms are finished, uh, in your opinion and in uh, uh, the opinion of other scholars in China, what, what's the optimal model for Chinese uh, uh, industry at that point after the reforms are done? What's the percentage of SOEs and what industry? How would you think the, the ideal is that, you were, that you're aiming for? For now, there is a clear instruction from the country. Make the SOEs better, stronger and bigger. So based on this, SOEs are definitely the focus of future development. Surely, we believe that theoretically the proportion of SOEs will be changing in a dynamic way, meaning that at a different phase, SOEs should be playing a different role. For example, during the upward cycle of the economy, often we can see the proportion of SOEs drop relatively. During the downward cycle, it will be up by a small margin. It's because the SOEs are playing a counter-cyclical role. 
based on today's outlook, we believe that in the coming years, when SOEs have been regrouped on the large scale, the proportion would drop slightly. So we have to have a clear understanding. Ultimately, SOEs are companies and entities in the market. This is the prerequisite that we must reach a consensus on. SOEs have to participate in the market competition and bring vitality to the market. This is their core role. We had to admit it that a state uh, company take some social responsibilities, mm -hmm. I mean overall responsibilities for the state. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the U.S. government all, all, always say. They are taking state company taking government strategy, yeah. <laughs> strategic. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, but but the, they they do they do something uh, for the for the for the society as a whole rather than for their own return. And some industries, you know, risky at the beginning, very risky and uh, natural resource uh, exploration uh, and uh, some other things, y you need some state company you know, to m bear more risks. And uh, actually, this government to take, take the risk as a public uh, uh, investment. For a developing country, at least for a while, uh, they do do some good, I mean, to the, to the society. China has set two major goals for the country. The first coming up in a very few years in 2020 is a moderately prosperous society. But I want to look ahead to the second goal, 2050, when China will become a fully modernized country. Looking ahead to 2050, from your perspective, what is the optimum structure at that time for state-owned enterprises? An ideal structure of SOEs should feature fairly market-oriented mechanisms in institutions, systems and operation modes in an all-around way. That means the current transition we're experiencing from a planned economy to a market economy should be almost completed. I believe by that time the boundary between state-owned companies and private companies would be hard to tell. Companies would be pretty much the same as independent legal persons. The public will only see joint stock companies, listed companies, companies of diversified equity, which are all marketized. The current distinction between state-owned companies private companies or foreign companies will no longer exist. Or to be more accurate, at least nobody would really be able to tell the difference between state-owned enterprises and private enterprises anymore. So I'm seeing a future with joint stock companies as the major legal persons in China's market economy. What's the ideal SOE structure? It depends on the priority of the objectives. If efficient use of resources to build national wealth is the highest good, then most SOEs should move toward complete independence from state control. If there is a need for SOEs to provide social benefits in addition to wealth creation or to enable rapid government intervention in crises, then SOE reform should move more cautiously and not seek detachment from state ownership. This is all the more true if maintaining state ownership is deemed essential in the socialist system. But then accept the fact that SOEs will be less efficient always. There's natural tension between, on the one hand, making SOEs more efficient by loosening ties with government and, on the other hand, maintaining SOEs as levers of government control. In all cases, SOE management must have incentives to work, not for their own interests, not for personal power and perks, but for the interests of all their shareholders, whether government or private investors. I applaud the open debate among experts. That's how we get closer to China.